non-mystery box right in front of us. This is basically a box of goodies sent to me from the legends at Colt Kits. I'm really excited to open this because I was given a strict sort of indication of what's inside it. It's, uh, it's based on the Euros, which is only days away. We're all excited. Us here in Australia, I'm really excited because it means I can wake up at 5 a.m. and watch some football and go to bed at midnight and watch some football. I don't know about you, but uh, the Euros are exciting. I'm really excited. It's been a whole year extra of waiting for this amazing tournament that we all get to see some of the best athletes in Europe to play. And um, I'm really privileged and so thankful to be able to work with the Colt Kids team to show you what they have sent me. This is definitely gonna be a fun box to open. I'm gonna get a knife now and uh, let's get right into it. Almost there, a few more cuts here and here. This box does not wanna open up. All right, so I think we've got the sweet spot now and the box shall open as that. Now, I'm not gonna do one of those uh, moments of truth. We're gonna keep this a lot more special for me and of course for you. I have not seen what's inside this. I can already tell there's a bit of plastic at the bottom of this. I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna show you, we'll talk about the kit. Now, a bit of, you know, a conversation about the current kits in the Euro 2020, 2021. I think out of all of them, we're not gonna really rate all the sort of uh, kits one by one, but I'm gonna say in a general as a tournament, I think this tournament, the kits, as an overall is going to be rated as a B. I don't think any of the, the countries had the greatest, I think, you know, creations of the kits with their manufacturers. I expected a lot more. I do, you know, like what Nike have done with their sort of portfolio, but I expected more from all the teams. So I've not looked down, I'm gonna put my hand down, I'll pick up the kit and talk to you about it. So the first one that we have is one of the most iconic Spanish jerseys that I uh, have actually always wanted. I uh, This is the first time I've actually picked one up in my own hands. Um, the material, again, one of my favorite things about the early Adidas eras is just the most softest material. The collar on this one is amazing condition. I know when it comes to collars and kits, that's one thing that I really love. I, I always say the attention to detail, but this kit here, special memories, I know Adidas tried to pay homage to this recently at a, at a World Cup for the kit, but this is one of the classic Adidas kits for the Spanish national team. And I do love everything about this kit. I, uh, I'm really excited to see players like Ferran Torres show up at this tournament. I've been watching him ever since Valencia, now he's at Man City. So, you know, I'd love to see uh, the Spanish team bring that sort of design back in a different way compared to the last one. But um, yeah, really excited. All right, so the next kit is iconic template for Adidas. Oh shit, I did not even see the back of that. Now that is something I have to uh, address. I know I literally just saw his Instagram posting about the stone roses, but um, how, uh, how iconic is this gentleman? Cantona, this, look, I've always wanted a Cantona jersey in my Man United collection, but I think a Cantona kit in the French national team. This is iconic. This is this is a piece of art. I actually love this kit so much. This template is amazing. The Adidas equipment right in the center here. Something about that, and even that sort of geometric number set, uh, numbering and lettering here is just classic, classic days. I love this so much. And from memory, I think I remember Cantona having that sort of shaggy hair. Really loved him in the early 90s. So to say this was 92, 94 era or between that, I know they had uh, Adidas basically gave him a few templates over the years to come. We saw it a few tournaments and then they went to Nike. But um, yeah, this one does remind me so much of Cantona. The fact that it has his name on the back it is a lot more special for me. I think this one is definitely my favorite one out of the box so far. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, look, I know I'm not getting a kit out of this box and I'd love to buy one. That one is a lot special in many ways. I think that one is definitely the one I would pick. I haven't even looked at the whole box, so let's see what we do have in this box today. So this is, of course, is a recent time Turkish kit. I'm really excited to see what the Turkish national team can do at this tournament. This is one of those kits that Nike did and a half and half in their time. I think they were experimenting with a few different gradients at the time and uh, just, you know, 
I think the Turkish team is something that we're gonna, we have to look out for. I think they're a dark horse at this tournament. Actually, come to think of it, uh, the Turkish national team, there was two players I remember off, off the top of my head. There was Hakka Sugar, and then, of course, Rushtu, the goalkeeper, that used to wear that sort of chalk line under his eyes. Uh, what ever happened to those guys? But um, yeah, that's some really, really exciting times for the Turkish team this uh, tournament. Now, this one here, wow. I'm not even going to try and uh, guess. Oh, well, it's, got the, it's got the date uh, on the badge here, right under the French uh, emblem. But uh, 1984 European champion, this one here. Look, I knew it was pre-90s because of the Trefoil Adidas sort of logo here on the right. But wow, this here, this is beyond epic. I think this is, in, in many ways, resembles the current kit that the French national team is wearing now. But um, the, the blue on this is a lot lighter. I think this is the traditional sort of French blue. I love this so much. I uh, can't imagine how much this is worth. Like, this is just... The dream kit. It's got many similar elements to some of the other sort of older generation Adidas kits that we see in the Premier League and La Liga. But um, yeah, this one here, it's got this beautiful overlapping collar that goes around the V line and just that second sort of basis of, uh, you know, materials on top of each other. But just the way this is stitched, it's just, you think of it, it's current time, but this is a beautiful one. So 1984. European Champions kit for France. All right, so we've got a few more. Yes, a classic German kit. You can't go wrong with these. This is beautiful. This is, I think, yeah, look, when it comes to national team kits, you rarely have a bad choice. I think when we look at like Brazilian national team kits or even the English, there's so many that, you know, fans and neutral fans could collect. And I think that's the major, I think attention sort of uh, dragger to the German kits. I think a lot of uh, neutral fans do love the German kits just because of how simplicity uh, dominates their designs. I think we fall for the colors, uh, the three colors on their chest, or even the design when they had inspirations from many ways that added as templates. But I think that's the best thing about the German national team kits that they can never do a wrong kit. So this one here does remind me so much of Baggio. I love this kit so much and of course I probably got it wrong. I think Nike and Italy had a short stint. There are rumours that the Italian national team is going over to Adidas. I think three stripes are taking over the reign at the Italian national team. But I think when they were with Nike they had some iconic, iconic kits at the sort of level where a lot of the players were retiring and it was a new batch of players. But um, I think their best era was the Adora. In, in, look, in many ways, it really depends on what player you know resembles that kit. But this one was one of the most simple kits that I uh, fell in love with when it comes to a national team kit for the Italian. Now, actually, while I was looking at this kit, it did remind me, you know, Baggio had a bad time at 94 World Cup in USA. I'm not sure, you correct me if I'm wrong, was this the kit that they wore in the 98 France uh, tournament where I think they crashed out of the semis? But um, yeah, nonetheless, again, uh, a simple Nike design. I think their away was white, but yeah, the Nike era at Italy was one of my favorites. I, I'd look, I'd love to see the swoosh come back at the it Italy national team. I love a merch from national tournaments. I, I'm a massive sucker for the 94 World Cup, but this one here is the 96 Euros. Look at that. This one here definitely is a classic, I think. One thing we won't see in current times is uh, just collector items like this. The colors, they used to pop out so much at major tournaments in the early 90s. I think that's one thing we're lacking inspiration-wise for future designs. I do see a lot of creatives out there, like your patterns and stuff, trying to bring that back into our sort of, you know, livelihoods. But um, yeah, wow, that one, that one's amazing. Ooh, this one still has a bit of, holy. All right, so that one definitely still has I, and now I see why. It's to protect that. Now, definitely, this has to be shipped back nicely. Oh, guys, you spoil me so much. Uh, this one here, wow. To have Ronaldo on the back like that, so pristine, so clean. 
And you know, classic 17, while well, that rhymed, that didn't even mean it. But uh, this here reminds me of, you know, the early days of Ronaldo's career. I think one of the early uh, Total 90 sort of templates. Uh, look, I think as an Aussie, we have fond memories of this sort of design and this template because it reminds us of the, of the Uruguay games. And uh, yeah, this one here, that little flick, I think we all had that little rat tail coming from our side. So uh, this is, you know, it's a major tournament now coming up as well, this current Euros, because it may be the last Euros Ronaldo plays or even has that sort of dominant level in him. I think his next one's gonna be the World Cup and then we'll see if he makes the next Euros as a player or even as a coach. But um, yeah, this one is a special one. I'm definitely gonna have to make sure I uh, fold this and send this back to the UK nice and safe. But um, look, when we talk about flavoring kits, again, like I said, the German national team always, always has something beautiful. And this is definitely an iconic template that we can all remember. I think a lot of, you know, even, even the Peruvian team, Alianza Lima, had this template. And we've seen this template throughout many sort of leagues. Uh, this is, I think it's known as the, the basket or something like that. I think a few of my friends have mentioned it to me recently. But uh, this green here, again, iconic to the German national team. I do love the design, the, the red, yellow, and black works so well with this one. It reminds me of so many players. I think this was worn more dominantly in the 96 sort of qualifications, but uh, yeah, look, I think this was the 94 sort of era kit. They had many other green kits prior and in future times, but again, the, the home version of this is iconic. It was worn at the 94 World Cup. So this one here, you know, it plays a true testament to, you know, um, you know, the German heritage, and I love this so much. Up next, we've got this training kit for the English national team. You know, I, I've actually seen this one pop up a lot. Uh, training kits now these days are, you know, marketed a lot more than they were back then, but this one is, you know, a unique Umbro design that had the green flag sponsorship at the front. The beautiful sort of design of the Umbro on the shoulders, you know, similar to what Kappa has back in the early 90s in there. I think both the brands are bringing that back in now. We'll see a lot of manufacturers try and implement that design in future designs. But uh, yes, this, this one is a classic. It does remind me a lot of, you know, Bex and Owen. But yeah, this one, this one I'm sure plays a true sort of connection to a lot of English fans. So I had a little bit of a sneak peek for the next one and I noticed the iconic design now. This one does remind me so much of Enzo Schifo. For, forgive me if I pronounced that wrong, but uh, it's the iconic 1984 Belgium Red Devils kit. This one here came in the white and a red. I'm not sure if it was white or maybe a black. I'm not sure, but I know I've seen the white and the black and the Adidas did redesign this for their, you know, I think the recent times. This is a pure representation of what Adidas attempted in the early 80s and you know early 90s. I think this one does speak truly to the Adidas sort of you know engine behind the design team. Uh, I love this design. Everything about this one is representative of what we love about national team kits. Um, I do hope that a lot of you know manufacturers do a bit more, a bit of an effort in future kit designs because it started in the early 80s and 90s and uh, sort of fell through in the early 2000s. So I'm hoping we're in the current stage where we see a lot more unique designs. But yeah, this one here reminds me so much of 1984 and Enzo Schifo. All right, so let's go. Haha, <laughs> this one here. This one here is not only a reminder of Gascoigne or Southgate or Shearer, but this one here, I've seen a lot of you Brits go crazy for. Um, love this one so much. I think this is, again, you know, Umbro played a big part in football in the early 90s, and this one, I think is 96, a classic design. I love the badge. I think the three lines in this one is probably my favorite I've seen on many of the kits. I know they've got a new redesign happening or happened, I think, even after this one, but, um, Love this one so much. The collar on this was clean and it's got the original badges on both of the sleeve. This one here is a classic. And uh, you know what? I think if I was to purchase a, an English kit myself and being neutral, this is definitely one I would, I would buy. I love the color. I think everything about this design, this era was my favorite. I think it is coming home for you. Let's just hope uh, you don't end up in penalties in the finals. Uh, we've got another one here. And this one's an iconic one as well because I think we've seen this one 
represented in a lot of score draw kits and I have to say, you know, when it comes to original kits, original is best. I think this one here is a pure representation of that as well. I think when you do go out and actually get the original kit, you know, it's a lot more special than having something of a remake. This one here not only is the classic kit of its time, but uh, yeah, everything about this era, that the badge, I think again, once again, the Umbro, and I, it's, I think it's the, probably the earliest implement of this uh, sleeve design that we see at Umbro. I think we've seen that in a lot of the newer sort of designs, but I think this is one of the first ones that I've seen in the past. But uh, it does remind me of Linica and Gascoigne once again. Uh, look, I think the identity behind this kit is a lot more. It connects to the culture and everything about this. Not only is it a kit that a lot of the English fans love, but I think it's become iconic. Uh, just connects you to you know, the players, but also the moments that this kit has had. And I think it is one of those kits that also plays a big part in pop culture. But it's one thing I do say with the cult team. I say, wouldn't it be nice if music and football connected once again? Um, I think this was featured in the New World Order, or New, sorry, not New World Order, New Order uh, video clip. And I, I always say, like, I do miss the times we had Stone Roses, uh, Oasis, and you know, Xavier just connecting with their local football clubs, or even just with the English team. I'd love to see that make a comeback because I think these kits, like this one here, I think the music video brought it back to life. And I know Soccer Bible or someone recently did a little photo shoot of a similar design. So you know what? I think the English current team, I think if those kits that we're wearing with Nike, like the one I'm wearing right now, had a bit more implement with pop culture, I think they could become iconic. I know when it comes to tournaments, winning a tournament and that kit becomes iconic, but we also see kits become iconic because of things off the pitch. So does this kit need a bit more love off the pitch? I think, I think it's so. I think it's a perfect connection for the English fans. Coming up next is an iconic Hummel. Yes, Hummel design for the Danish team. Now, this one here, wow, like the collar, it's such a thin material. I uh, I have to say, I've never seen this one in my life and I know I'm probably gonna get judged a lot by everyone watching this, but this is a beautiful design, a, a beautiful kit. The sort of detailing in the material uh, is just unlike any other. The Hummel doesn't really come up in many people's like you know conversations or even collections. You know, when it comes to my sort of most bespoke manufacturer probably be like uh, Marathon, but um, Hummel, I don't really have any Hummel kits. So this one's probably one of my first ones that I've, you know, actually held in my hands. The badge of the Danish team, again, is iconic. And I think everything about this one is, yeah, truly uh, an implement to what uh, the Danish team is. And I'm really excited, you know, to see some future, you know, redesigns of this one. All right, so by the feels of it, this is definitely my last kit or my second last kit. Wow, yeah, so this one's definitely gotta be the representation of this for what it was. Don't know the exact year, but it does have the 96 badge and the fair play, so it is around that time. I'm guessing Michael Owen, I'm loving that collar, that large sort of strange V-line design, the centralized Badge and Umbro in the middle is similar to what we have right now with current times. It doesn't have any sort of detailing on the sleeves, which is similar to this. This one's got a blue collar, this one's got a blue collar. So I'm guessing these two are alike in many ways of this design. I love this one so much. And I think when I mention simplicity being key, I can show in that in this box, a lot of the kits back in the time even though there wasn't much effort done by the manufacturers, I think it was the moments that really spoke truly of the designs. I think they implemented the sort of success of the kit, but also the interest in the kit. So I like to see what the current crop of kits, even though I said they're a B plus at best or a B for the entire tournament's amount of kits, 
which kit from this year's Euros do you think is so simple but will become a classic? I think personally, the English team kit that I'm wearing right now is definitely going to be a classic both home and away. I think purely just because of the plays they have, so hopefully we get some individual brilliance. But on top of that, I think we see with the German kits, I'm pretty much not a fan of that because I think they could have done a lot more. The Portuguese team, again, two simple kits, but iconic in many ways. I think we saw Ronaldo have that bespoke long sleeve design. I think if Nike could make a few more for the players this summer, even though it's summer, I think it could truly, you know, spark interest in a lot of fans purchasing the Portuguese team kit. But again, a beautiful kit. And like I said, this entire collection has been amazing. And I have to say there is one more left in this one. And I did notice it. It is the collaboration between a store like 94 and Cole Kits. It's this amazing sort of, you know, collab and yeah, it's just a strange, strange, strange design here that I love. I did notice this online. So thank you to the team at Cole Kits for sending this over for me to actually check out in person. It's got Gazza at the front, it's got Shira. It's got some amazing sort of moments in pop culture for any English fan. This is definitely something you should be wearing alongside your uh, PSG kit at the next Glastonbury. Uh, unless your name is Alex, definitely this is something that is going to be a summer favorite. Look, I, uh, I love this one so much. When it comes to unique designs, a store like 94 have done an amazing job here with Cole Kits. And uh, if you are interested in this one, you're going to have to check them out on the Cole Kits website. Well, there you have it. The Euros are around the corner. I'm really excited to see some amazing football being played in the next couple of weeks. I think this is a great indicator of how amazing football is. The kits over the you know 30 year lifespan have been amazing. I'm really excited to see the future of football in Europe and I think the World Cup coming around the corner, this is a great way to start. There's Olympics, there's Copa, there's the Euros. I think we're really spoiled for choices in this break for you in the summer on the other side of the world. And of course, for us over here in winter, I'm really excited to watch some amazing football, but of course, wear some amazing kits. If you are after any kit from the past or any of the current times, please check out coltkits.com because not only are these available, but there will be some amazing other national team kits. And of course, if you have your own, please post it online, tag Colt Kits. We'd love to see your collection. But as always, please stay safe, stay away from stupid people and be safe this year. Enjoy your football and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you and goodbye.